What's up, rockers? All across the world, this is kind of like take two. <laughs> Technical difficulties, things, wires are crossed, things happen, swords don't really well when tips are touching each other. Don't ask me about it, okay? Can't talk about it. What happens in Mexico stays in Mexico backstage. <laughs> <laughs> over here actually in their g14 classified secret location uh -huh. and their training studio dojo where they're training monkeys to attack the world the bunker the bunker yep the bunker <laughs> <laughs> Bad water. Close. 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 but they're missing one more because i guess he quit the band or something like that <laughs> no. no we actually no, fired him we haven't told him yet though so they replaced him with yeah. a monkey it's, yeah. it's really hard <laughs> to, uh, you know, you stop inviting people you fire to rehearsals. It's just awkward because this is technically his place. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sean, our drummer, is busy today, so it's just yeah. us. Not with his lady. Uh, I guess that's kind of important. You gotta take your girl out for her birthday, I it's guess. It's a little you know? important. Mm -hmm. You know, he's gonna take her out to Applebee's, give her her Diet Coke for the year. You know? <laughs> Dude, that two for 20? Come that on, extra now? special yeah. stuff, you know. We're it's in a, a recession. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The present was the gas gift. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this time I'll pick you up for your birthday. <laughs> but we were supposed to have it over at House of Blues on their special night where they're debuting their EP right live that day. Yeah. And but we can talk about the show because that was a killer show, amazing show. They were just they were eleven tickets shy of a sold out show. So That's close. how many people. Because it had to be like 400 and something to be sold out. 410. Yeah. 410. Think, yeah. So you just needed 399. They were at 399. <laughs> 399. So close. so close. But a hell, still, hell of a 399 show tickets. That's pretty legit. That yeah. was a good, it was a big turnout. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a show. I think we're still riding the high from that one. Yeah. For yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. And then also trying to put together the plans for what's next. So The next 20 steps. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, let's talk about the show. You guys did a killer set. You sounded amazing. Um, you also did a cover of MCR. You did a teenagers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. L l little outside of our wheelhouse, but we're all big My Chemical Romance fans. And uh, when we were tossing around ideas for a cover, because we like to throw in a cover occasionally at the end of our set, especially on bigger shows, because it's fun and it does something that's a little different, a little outside of our wheelhouse, our normal sound. Uh, like the last one we did, we did the Leaving Song Part 2 by AFI. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to That's choose. That's great. That's a classic. Yeah, that was a fun one. That was fun. And then... Uh, I was just learning to scream during that one, so I was super <laughs> nervous. But <laughs> I can do it now. <laughs> but, but yeah, we ended up landing on Teenagers, and that was a fun one. Uh, Stevie from Late Night Union, uh, Sean's brother, joined us on stage to play guitar on that yeah, one. That yeah, that was so fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was, that cool. was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now, what else... On the whole, sound-wise, what was your guys', I would say, do you think there was any hiccups you saw? Did someone mess up? Because you never seen anything. Do you guys feel like there was anything that happened, or was it just like you felt it was a perfect Oh, show? yeah, there were a bunch of things that went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did notice that uh, for Sean, he couldn't hear anybody for his in-ears. He kept looking yeah, at the guy. Yeah, he like, was hey, saying hey, that, yeah. Pumping it up, yeah. Because yeah. he's the only one that uses in-ears. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the rest of us are cavemen. Yeah, yeah he was Old having school. trouble with that. Yeah, yeah. School. They, don't, they, fuck they don't need it. Tonight is bringing on. What is you, that? You know what? That's like that's a real rock show though. Like you go in, you kind of expect there's gonna be things that go wrong, but nine times out of ten, you're the only ones who really notice. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you know, I dropped my pick and missed a couple notes on one song because I had to grab a pick, but. You know, I'm probably the only one who's going to notice that. It you know? feels like it's lasting forever on stage when, like, the fuck that's happened. But it's like, like that moment. They're going to know. They're yeah, gonna they're going to know. Gonna know. <laughs> they're going to know. But we, I don't know. We played enough shows to know that they usually don't know. And if they do, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. fine. No, everyone's still drunk enough. They're like, woo, Rom Springer. Uh, and honestly, I kind of like it when I see bands that I like and they fuck up. Because I'm like, ah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> like Lars when he messed up during <laughs> <laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's chill it's yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean rock and r playing rock music is not the art of perfection yeah you know so that's how you know it's a live show you know when you hear analog recordings and you hear those little backing tracks and burps and yeah stuff in the back mm -hmm. like that's how you, that's how you know it's rock yeah you know it's about the show you know it's not necessarily about playing every note perfect all the time a live show is going to have its own little little moments and yeah we have those all the time so, but we always try to put on a good show through it. Pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> That's the key. You didn't see anything. <laughs> Nobody saw. Yeah. Black and black. Man in black. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see anything. What? You bought us all shots? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
but still killer amazing show almost Thank near you. sold out sounded great um, I mean I didn't see any hiccups uh, besides here showing the uh, show with the you know obviously mm. you didn't hear yeah. you guys but yeah. other than that everyone else was amazing they mm -hmm. loved the teenager cover I would sing along but you guys did a pretty good hour set it was about an hour yeah about about an hour, yeah. yeah 9 yeah. to 9 30 to 10 30 yep so pushed a little bit maybe going to 10 40 with a little encore uh, you know the casual Oh, sorry guys, last song, <laughs> bye. Totally not planned yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> no idea what's going to happen. We're like, yeah. what are we going to do? I guess we'll have to play a cover. <laughs> and this is your second time playing there too, right? S second yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, we it's played, like uh, Blues, yeah. We released our last EP, American Gothic, there in 2019. Which is a good, that was a great fitting. You, know, you did it last time before, now you're doing it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we got a little tradition going on there. Yeah. So Next one's going to be the album release. Hell yeah. It's coming. Main stage. Yep. There it is. Hey. <laughs> Uh, but that's a good segue then, going into the new EP that was released on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so, Cult Status. Cult Status. Love it. Killer. It was, like, it's a banger through and through. I mean, you already released some of the singles before prior to that. Yeah. Uh, building up to it, yeah. 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 Uh, but I love the art direction you guys created on it. Uh, it's got that cult vibe to it, mm -hmm. you know? It has got Grim Reapers on there and Death. <laughs> It's totally like that clothing line from um, Spencer's, the ones like, oh yeah, it's Seance Circle, oh yeah, Easy Bake Oven, there's a dead body in there. Yeah. <laughs> like that, and it's freaking killer. Perfect. Babies for Seance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it matches also the total vibe of the album. Mm. It's Thanks. got that dark, mystic, ass change, grunginess to it. It's like, it's perfect. It, it literally does fit it. Oh, thanks, that's man. awesome to hear thanks, that's yeah. really good to hear because yeah you never know if like the visuals what you see the visuals matching the audio yeah. you don't know if that's going to translate so that's yeah red <laughs> I, th I, I think especially like this time we uh the artist that we commissioned to do the art for it we kind of let him just have free reign mm -hmm. with it and we sent him the songs and we said you already know our style because he had designed the flyer for us and we said, listen to the songs and just go wild. Whatever you're inspired to come up with based on those songs, do it. And then he sent us the artwork for Cult Status. And we all looked at it and we were like, that's interesting. Like, we all liked it, but we were like, oh, okay, I see what he did with some things. We were like, I wonder how other people are going to, you know, receive this. And it seems like it's been a success so far. People like the art. Yeah, I love how he so. did the little alphabet block yeah. on the cover for the song Alphabet Collector. Yeah. That made me really happy. It was like, yeah. Cool. yeah he's a, killer artist steven yoyata he absolute beast of an artist and now it, it also like i said it matches going into the, the overall sound and theme going into it. you guys went a lot heavier on this like yeah. previous mm -hmm. yeah and what when, when we talked on the offline and before technically it was the offline <laughs> <laughs> um but you guys went on a heavier route than your kind of bluegrassy american songwriter style that you guys were yeah. doing before mm -hmm. So what made you transition to do that and going somewhere different? I think it's kind of just been the culmination of, of two things, really. One, coming from where we started, you know, Graves and the Bad Weather was initially just me and Leandra, and our background is kind of this country Americana bluegrass sound. Mm -hmm. Same and songwriter. So when we started playing rock, it you know, years of playing that and becoming better and better and achieving that sound in your head and just yeah. getting closer to it, not saying we're there yet, we're still on our way, but every single day we're getting closer to it. And then also the addition of Sarah and uh, Sean as our rhythm section. Made a huge difference. Huge difference. Huge difference. Huge difference because we're all super rock fans, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and, and I think uh, it was, I, I mean, I think it's, I mean, obviously it's all of us, but even like playing with our previous drummer and then playing with uh, Sean, I felt a difference playing with Sean mm -hmm. that made it a little bit more uh, more rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, for well, sure. you were even saying before that Sean used more kick for you, which is like, mm -hmm. oh my god, yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. playing with super artsy drummers. Uh, our previous drummer, I often heard the beat and the cymbals more than uh, on the floor. He was a big jazz guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just a little bit. It took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around it. And then when we started playing with Sean. Uh, he does a lot of cool stuff too, but he also keeps the beat where I expect it to be, and so it's a lot easier for me to find and and really lock in with it. And I think that a bass locked with the drums is a big thing for rock and heavy music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So playing with Sean for me is definitely uh, part of what made me compose some heavier mm -hmm. stuff with, with the mm -hmm. band. Yeah. And then Sarah too. Sarah and Sean are both really good writers as well. You know, in the previous yeah. couple lineups that we had, it was me and Leandro writing everything. 
Yeah. So now we have four people who can all equally, you know, partake in the songwriting process, and they have their own opinions mm-hmm. and their own sounds and their own ideas, and that's kind of contributed to the sound that we have in the cold status. What well, was so cool is that was something I had never experienced before. Because before I would like write the acoustic songs, you know, and then bring them to Taylor, and then we'd bring them to the band and like flesh them out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it'd be like skeleton of the song, fill it in. And then with Sarah and Sean and Taylor and I, we all come in collaboratively and it'll be either Sarah comes up with a bass riff or I have a melody in my head or it's so organically collaborative. It's really beautiful. And I know a lot of bands write like that, but we hadn't found that until we found this collection of people. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys did it from creating this recording studio back to jam space during, yeah. Yeah. essentially during like before lockdown and kind yeah. of having that mm-hmm. blessing where other people didn't have where you guys could sit down jam out together and write all your music together yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we kind of had the mentality when the lockdown hit you know not to disparage you know anyone who didn't take this mentality ban wise but we refused to let i think we started building this in april of 2020 so in the you right know the hottest part mm-hmm. of lockdown yeah. you know and we just refused to let that stop us we were like you know what if we got to take time off I think we all knew it was going to last longer than two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, so sure. we were like, you know yeah. what? We're not going to let it stop us. This is good because we were playing so much. And we were we were cautious. I just want to put that out there. We weren't just being willy-nilly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we played so much that it kind of got in the way of time that we needed to write and really find yes. our sound together. Yeah. So we said, you know, this is actually really good for us because... Because we can't, we can't play, play shows. So we're just going to write, write, write. We're going to figure out our sound and figure out how to play with each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we built this. And, uh, yeah, it was insanely productive. And yeah. it continues to be productive now. Yeah, Riot so. was the first song that we, that we wrote, wrote off together, the yeah. EP and the first song we all wrote together, too. And that's currently mm-hmm. our highest streaming song. So at that time was a blessing in disguise, not being able to play during that time. Now, I, I think, I'm pretty sure it was, Raya is also where Sarah has some like, cool bass leads mm-hmm. on there, because yeah. I remember her stepping up on there, and it's like, boom, out of nowhere, yeah. just stepping <laughs> up, boom, <laughs> having her getty lead, let's play yeah. the moment going up there, and everyone's like, whoa! I know, people lost their shit, I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, well, people really like Riot, and we closed our show at the House of Blues with it. People were asking for Riot. Not the even start like of the four set, songs yeah. into the set. Yeah, they we were like less than twenty minutes into the show, and people were like, "Play your eye." And we're like, "Yeah, you know, maybe we'll see." Yeah. So, yeah, uh, maybe we I don't know. We're we're, we're a new band, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so when we finally did play it, I, I did make sure to get up there because people really like that song. It resonates with them, and whenever I start it, the the first baseline intro part is, is pretty distinct. So for sure, people yeah. recognize that and they get excited about it. So I'm trying you know we've been in covid for a while but trying to work on the performance and and helping mm-hmm. people get hyped for those parts that they like yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah putting together the show yeah the show yeah. part well you guys definitely do have the show part going down because everyone was moving around especially Andre. she was like wow. <laughs> <laughs> freaking tony katane going on white snake <laughs> I know my hair. There are a couple of points in every show where I inhale my hair and I'm trying not to like gag while I'm singing and I'm just like trying to get it out of my mouth. There was one time, it might have been House of Blues the last time that we played it, where she actually got her hair stuck in my headstock. <laughs> like in the middle of a song, we had to finish the song. Yeah. That, that was some place She's not moving her head. Yeah. I, yeah. No, we just yeah. like each other a lot. <laughs> it was so funny because I did like this huge hair whip and then just for the rest of the song was just like this, well... Who was trying to get my hair? Someone was trying to get my hair out. I think someone jumped up on stage. I think our old, yeah, someone was trying to get my hair out of it because it was uh, really locked in there. It was really funny. (laughs) (laughs) I was just laughing. I was like, well. It could be worse. It could have been like a chunk of hair. You're like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Just cut that thing off. Well, then going back into the EP for Pulse Status, it's four tracks. Four tracks. Four tracks. uh, Alphabet Collector, Mm -hmm. Bad Woman, Mm -hmm. Worth. Worth it. Worth it. And then uh, Riot. Riot, yeah. yeah. So when did you guys decide that you were going to make this? Because you released each one kind of separately as their own singles. Mm-hmm. When did you guys release that you're like, or you know, we're just put this all as one EP together? We kind of had a pl- we had plans to build up to the EP, and we had been talking about the Cold Status EP for a while. Um, and I think what really made us like finally decide to put it out was 
House of Blues was initially booked as our, you know, our farewell to California show because we had plans. We were heading to Nashville, you know, third week of uh, July. And then some things came up, some really good things that ended up making it very worthwhile for us to stay here. Mm -hmm. So then we had to kind of shift the focus on House of Blues because we really wanted to make it an event, not just another show. Yeah. You know, and we were like, you know what, maybe it's time to put out that EP. So we collected the songs that we had. We've been working with an um, absolutely fantastic uh, mixing engineer. Mm -hmm. And I'm hesitant to call him a producer because, you know, he wasn't in the room with us a lot. But the notes that he provided and the guidance that he provided us was invaluable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the next EP or hopefully the next album, we're going to be in the room with him in Nashville doing that one. But, um, yeah, that's kind of what convinced us to finally put out the Cole Status EP was that we were staying here and uh, it'd been a while since we put something out other than singles. Were you going to say so. who mixed it? <laughs> Are you <laughs> just uh, going to talk vaguely? Yeah, it's uh, uh, Ben McLeod from All Them Witches. <laughs> he's, he's the uh, excellent gu guitar player excellent from All Them Witches. And he, oh, he has an ear unlike anyone I've ever fucking heard. He's, he's the GOAT. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's the GOAT. He is. Yeah, really he was incredible, yeah. Pleasure to work with as well, yeah. Yeah, because you can hear the big step up difference going from previously to American Gothic, because again, I had that bluegrass, he's song right yeah. feel to it, then going into like, I'm going to fuck your head up with some American Gothic. <laughs> 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 well, I loved, I loved going into the heavy stuff too, because a lot of our content, the lyrical content is about mental health and like the stuff that I go through. And um, it was really different and kind of like empowering to be angry about it during the songwriting process, I guess, yeah. rather than just like contemplative or kind of sad about it because the music was so heavy I was like I was like oh no I can show how fucking mad I am that I have OCD and <laughs> stuff is shitty most of the time you know what I mean and that was that was really cool I really enjoy writing like that well now since the EP has been dropped and right now on your number one is Alphabet Collector that's yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Now, yeah. right now it's the number one streaming one so I guess I'll bring a good question is like bringing up what is that song about essentially for you guys and writing and what is that the significance well, Alphabet Collector is a person that has a lot of like different mental health diagnoses. It's a term that me and Taylor came up with. He's, he was making fun of me because I had gotten another diagnosis or whatever, and he was like, what are you trying to collect yeah, the making alphabet? Fun of mental health problems. making fun of me, I know, I know. But you know what, if you don't laugh, you cry, so. <laughs> so it was like, I'm DD, ADHD, OCD, and he's like, what are you trying to collect the damn alphabet? And I started laughing, I was like, yeah, I guess so. And I was like, but I'm going to save that because that's funny. So then um, it fit one of the songs we were writing. So that song's really special to me because I get to go through and list briefly like four of the mental health things that I go through that I struggle with. And then um, the chorus is just kind of like proclaiming like, okay, yeah, I'm an alphabet collector. One of the lyrics is I'm fucked up or whatever. Like just kind of owning it, being like, yeah, I struggle with things. We all struggle with things. Most people struggle with really, really hard things, and um, whatever stigmas around that is bullshit. Because I don't know anyone who doesn't go through something, and some are harder than others. But I think it's important to just be like, yeah, that's me, and this is what I go through, and I'm working hard to fix it. But the first step is like, you know, acknowledging that the problem's there, so that you can start, you know, yeah. getting help. Yeah. Well, it's funny because when I was listening to it and hearing it, because I'm going through everything, going because Spotify puts everything for the most played down to like the least played, mm -hmm. down, and then hearing that, and it's like in my mind, I'm always already picturing it as kind of like a, a mental health problem song, and like mm -hmm. someone having the little pill box, yeah. the letters uh, on there. Yeah. I'm like, there we go, collecting the pills. Yep. I can see that. Mm -hmm. So I was already putting that in the mind. This must be a mental health problem song. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Yeah. percent and that tends to be a theme throughout a, a lot of our music. I think we've made that a big, you know, mission point with our music mm -hmm. is the uh, the mental health and the stigma around it. We used to work with uh, an organization called Hope for the Day, and we had a national tour booked uh, with them doing events with them, and we got two or three events in before the mm -hmm. pandemic hit. But um, that's always been something that's been very near and dear to our hearts is the, uh, the stigma around mental health and supporting people who also struggle with it and making them feel seen as yeah. well. Yeah, because a big, a big problem is, well, once Taylor asked me, he's like, what's something that someone could say to you that would make you feel better about the shit that you go through? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, well, usually it's when they say, I, me too. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Like, you're not crazy. You know what I mean? And I was like, fuck, that's so true. So, like, no matter where I'm at in the journey, whether I'm doing really 
poorly or really well is I feel like as long as people can see someone else who's going through it, then it's like, okay, it's not just me. You know what I mean? Then we can keep going together kind of a thing. Do you think you guys are going to have more of that advocacy going into it in the future? Maybe start linking songs to an organization, merchandise or something like that and being... Because most bands, they, they do it, I almost feel like it does it as almost like a celebrity status thing. Oh, hey, it's oh, Mental yeah. Health Month, we're going to do this. Right, yeah. But yeah. there's no true... Maybe there's a couple bands that do it, but there's no one who actually actually linked to this yeah. to kind of show they're supporting this year round not just for one month not just yeah. for a seasonal fucking trend but yeah. actually showing support and they're being an advocate for it yeah I mean I try and talk about it often like on our social medias and everything it's it's brought up a lot um, I yeah I don't make it something I only talk about like once every once in a while you know like like lyrics they come from your truth and stuff and a lot of the truth in my lyrics are things that I'm going through whether it's like panic attacks or whatever all that stuff so yeah it's definitely not a fab thing it'd be nice if it was (laughs) 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 I don't have to deal deal with it (laughs) and we're we're, as you know as the lockdowns are kind of like lifting you know at this point they seem to be pretty much lifted nationwide we're exploring the opportunity of going back out on the road mm-hmm. again. And with that, we're talking to some organizations to continue what we started in 2020 with Hope for the Day. Yeah, because um, those shows, they were about um, mental health and suicide prevention. Mm-hmm. So we would have, like, e- each band that we booked, I would tell them, like, well, we'll talk on these m- matters, you know what I mean? Like, if you ever had thoughts of suicide and you're comfortable sharing those, like, share them with the audience so that we can all, like, you know, be together. Yeah. And or any struggles that you've had, and there were some really amazing, powerful moments at those shows, which there were, yeah, I definitely. just yeah. loved. It was really, really special, and I want to, I want to be able to do more of those. Yeah, yeah. We kicked off the first one uh, with some mutual homies. It was us, uh, Whiskey and the Wolves, and Dead Poet Society. Hey. Mm-hmm. And um, local, so Cal Bounce, great guys. Best yeah, scene. yeah. Good homies, of course. And yeah, the first one was at the Wayfair in Costa Mesa, and we were supposed to essentially make it all the way through the south and up to Chicago and back and uh, I think we were really bummed out when we didn't actually get to cross the state line because of the lockdown so mm-hmm. we're definitely looking into doing that again with other various organizations yeah yeah that's something mm-hmm. like I said that's something we actually care about and we really do advocate for we don't do it one month a year you know we don't do it when it's profitable to us we actually care about that yeah yeah, and I've had instances where, like, there's something that, like, you know, dissociation or depersonalization, it's, like, a thing where you feel like you're not there, you know, yeah. it's often associated with, like, PTSD, but um, I used to write essays and put them online, and sometimes there were people, or there was this one in particular girl, she wrote me, she was like, hey, um, I was going to kill myself because I had this, and I didn't know what it was, you know what I mean, but now that I know what it is, I can kind of, like, move forward. And I didn't know what it was for a year, you know what I mean? Because nobody talks about it. It's such a weird niche thing, you know what I mean? So, like, I feel like the more people we get talking about all this stuff, the more we can get people to get help. Because there is help, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, it's not that you're stuck here forever, even though it feels that way. (laughs) You're not. Well, and also going into on like, you know, touring and why you guys want to be doing, and you bring up Whiskey and the Wolves, local OC band. Um, that would be a, honestly a huge tour for both of you guys, and get uh, to get Lucas to buckle down, their lead singer. Just get out of the house and <laughs> stop doing makeup. I've heard it. One of the street women does his makeup. I I don't know. I just heard it through the grapevine. I don't know if it's true or not. That boy has more makeup and more shoes than any girl I've ever dated. He has more shoes but, than me, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I didn't say it. Um, <laughs> No, we love, we love Lucas. We love Lucas. Love you, Lucas. <laughs> and I love playing with whiskey. Every time we yeah. play with whiskey, it's a blast. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, it's always a good yeah. time. They're so good. Boys, yeah. I love them. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, uh, uh, if that should happen coming this year or in 2023 after you guys are done with everything and settle down, that would be a huge tour. That's a complimenting sound, and this, you guys can even rotate headlining nights. It would be a mm-hmm. killer show. Well, we're on our yeah. way because actually about 10 15 minutes before you showed up me and lucas were talking about something so yeah there's gonna be s- something happening so this year so oh hey we'll see all right be a lookout graves versus up. whiskey we're gonna fight <laughs> to the death that would be a sick tour post here <laughs> fight to graves death, versus whiskey like five or six of them that's right they might win <laughs> <laughs> they all they, they outnumber us they're like 80 pounds soaking wet fair, fair. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I guess it'd be fun to go into a little bit of band history about Sorry. it. Because I already know that Leandra and Taylor, you guys knew each other before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of like your own bluegrassy thing. So how did Sarah and Sean pop in to the band? Well, I, I met them in 2019. Uh, I think I like met you guys to audition for the band like in September-ish. Something like Something that. Something like that, yeah. 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 And I actually had seen them play uh, earlier, like in February, March. I had seen them play at a, a venue kind of close to where I live. Uh, and I thought it was pretty cool. I specifically remember Taylor used to always go out into the audience and play guitar <laughs> solos there. And I remember because I was in the audience watching them play, and Taylor came out and he was like standing right in front of me. And I was like, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, as now we're like, get back on stage. <laughs> as, as a performer, I'm like, oh, it's so cheesy, but it was a cool experience <laughs> as an audience member. <laughs> Uh, so that that's the first time I saw Graves, and then when I was auditioning for them, um, it, it was it was kind of cool because I didn't know who it was at first. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna reach out to this group that needs a bass player, and then I found out it was Graves and the Bad Weather, and I was like, oh, that's super cool. I've seen them. I love their music. I think that they're great. And um, yeah, we had a couple of auditions because uh, yeah, I was learning a couple of the songs that were on the American Gothic mm-hmm. EP at that time, which was already written when I joined the band. And then the last show you guys played before I started playing with you was the previous House of Blues show. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. So that's how I met them. Definitely a lot of fun. And uh, it's been a lot of fun since as well. God bless Craigslist. Yeah, yeah. Backslides. <laughs> <laughs> the back pages. The back pages, yeah. <laughs> They don't have that anymore, not that I know about it. Um, no, no, of course not. <laughs> no, we can't even post any musician stuff there anymore. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, that's oh, like, wow. I think Craigslist is starting to... Oh, we got the tail end of that one, thank wow. God. I don't even yeah. know how you find new band members anymore. I wouldn't know yeah, at this I point. No <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know at this yeah, point. Just uh, stealing from other people's bands. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm it. hoping like, that I never need to find out. <laughs> no, the keyword is borrowing, and then you just kind of steal. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, hey, dude, you down to jam with us? Oh, cool. We got a show. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you slowly start thinking. That's the new way. <laughs> the new way. Yeah. And then Sean was kind of a similar story because we decided to, you know, kind of part ways with our, our previous drummer and bass player. Um, and there was notice, you know, we, we knew the House of Blues was going to be the last show. And then... We had been talking to Sean because he was in a band that we played a lot of shows with, mm-hmm. and the whole band, they're family to us. They're you know, so we much fun, yeah. yeah I always they, love hanging out with them. Yeah, we hang out a lot, you know, and uh, he was playing drums with them. They were called Late Night Union, um, and we had talked to him about possibly playing with Graves. So, and he liked the idea, and uh, we ended up auditioning him, and it went great, and he's been killing it on the kit since. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's like a little Tom Lee. He was like, yeah, he's. Oh, dude, he's a showman of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, Sean's putting on it. his own show behind the drum set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize this, but he does that here when we're rehearsing. Oh, yeah. Time. Yeah, he can't play drums without showing off. There's, there's <laughs> not a time that he's just chilling. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, yeah, he's great on stage, but here too, it's always so much fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. All over the place. I'm not showboy. This is who I am, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's who he <laughs> that is. That really man. is just him. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, he's all about the show. He's obsessed with with lighting and the fog you know, machine. At House of Blues, he even brought his own fog machine. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it. I was like, "Where's this fog coming from?" Yeah, he's very <laughs> into like, the oh, visual aesthetic okay. of the show. Yeah. Well, it's 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 pretty. Then it's kind of awesome. It's all blessing. Everything worked out, and everything. Now you guys have this cohesive family yeah. bond yeah. that's showing now in your playing. Mm. All it's together, really nice. yeah. you're yeah. seeing that dynamic of your own personalities molding together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we all come from you know we all have vastly different influences, vastly different backgrounds, but we're mm. all able to bring it into one cohesive unit. Which well, is that's fun. what makes it fun because we all listen to this very different stuff, you know. And then like each influence coming together, I feel like it makes something that's kind of new, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Like Riot, I had like I heard a, a particular guitar riff in my head and then we started jamming it and Taylor played something completely different and it made the song so much better honestly just collaborative writing like that with different influences from everybody uh, I think it makes better songs like that well and you're you're also very open to like people 
people's input like on the riffs that you bring like mm. i appreciate that about you because i can be really stubborn yeah well i'll tell you <laughs> what playing in uh, cover bands for a little while there are some people that are really super particular about playing things exactly yeah. the way they're that's recorded like, that's not what they did dude <laughs> right exactly i got so sick of that i was like i'm never gonna be that person <laughs> <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always happy to change we're not cover band playing. we're a tribute band right oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god some of that was yeah. just ridiculous it's like alice cooper doesn't even play it this way when he plays it live man <laughs> yeah. so yeah i'm always happy to change the riffs and the more diverse influences we have going into a song i think the better stronger song it makes and the more it sounds like graves yeah versus sounds yeah. like what i listen to <laughs> or what i listen to yeah. or just what taylor listens to or sean yeah yeah so then what is it that you are each listening to right now then? It's a great question. So, yeah, I recently have started getting back into like my musical roots, like the kind of music I grew up with. My all-time favorite band growing up was Rush. And uh, so I've been listening to some of the old albums I used to listen to a lot again. And um, I especially like listening to that because, of course, in some of like the 80s and 90s albums, Katie Lee is playing bass and keyboards at the same time, so it helps me figure out how to balance those two things in our band, even though our sound is very different, because like you, you realize things like there's always uh, you know, something holding down the low end, unless there's some sort of break going on, and so regardless of what I'm playing, I know I gotta keep that held down. I've also been uh, listening to some old Pink Floyd stuff, like The Wall. I just uh, listened to that recently. Uh, I used to listen to it all the time, and I haven't listened to it in years until just uh, earlier this week. And uh, so I've been getting back into some of those things. I've also been trying to discover some new music, just going through playlists and stuff. Um, I have been listening to this uh, band called Nova Twins. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like their stuff because it hits pretty hard. And it has some cool, like, electronic sounding stuff. I don't know if it's production or if they do it live, but I, I like to listen to that because it's stuff I can add into our writing, like, how does this production fit in the rest of the song? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm listening to lots of other stuff, too. I'm trying to listen to more synth stuff so I know how to add it in, like, uh, I always think of King Crimson when oh, I think of stuff you listen I to. I love <laughs> King Crimson. <laughs> yeah. It's like King Crimson and uh, Midnight Oil. And Nightwish. And I wish, yeah. Oh my god, there's so I'm answering great. the question for you, but that's what I think of when I think of your music. Oh, there's so many great bands, yeah. I love Midnight Oil. I just missed the show that they played here in L.A. because I got COVID, and I got it the day before I couldn't go. So disappointed. Uh, and definitely <coughs> King Crimson, I saw them before. Tony Levin was playing with him, one of my all-time favorite bass players. He's played with all sorts of people. Check him out if you haven't seen him. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I could go on all night. So <laughs> 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 um, yeah, my, my go-to is always uh, you know stoner rock and doom metal. Um, I do a, a doom metal podcast in collaboration with our label Bentley Records, the Big Daddy Doomcast, where I'm constantly reviewing you know new releases in the doom and stoner rock scene. You know, Are you band. a Mastodon fan? I am a Mastodon fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not in, I'm not in every album Mastodon <laughs> So let's put it this way. His I'm, love is I'm unconditional, more, unconditional. As a guitar player, I'm more of a Brent Hines fan than I am a Mastodon fan. That's fair. Um, That's fair. But, you know, there's some bands that I'm listening to right now. There's a band from Italy called Rosie Finch that I'm super into. Um, Formula 400 from San Diego is absolutely killing it. I, but we haven't had a chance to meet in person yet. But I found their music before I found out they were local. So I'm really excited to meet up and hopefully play with those guys. There's another good one um, out in San Diego. You guys would be a good fit for a show, too. Um, they're up in that northern San Diego area mm. uh, by, like, uh, La Mesa and all that. Yeah. Uh, Sons on Fire. Oh, there's, okay. There's hmm. two brothers, actually. I'll have to check them so out. Yeah, the name, I've heard they're about really, them. Yeah. Uh, they've toured with us with another band that I was touring with. Um, and they were killer. And that oh, would probably yeah. fit with your guys' vibe. I'll have to check them out. Um, currently, I'm kind of doing the same thing Sarah is doing, though. I'm kind of back to my roots listening casually in the car, though. I'm listening to a lot of country, man. Like, I, country is always, like, that's old faithful. <laughs> like, <laughs> not, not broke pop my country. heart, so I broke her jaw. <laughs> no, not that, not that guy. Not, that guy. <laughs> not, not pop country. Like Sergio. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the old country. There are some newer guys right now that I'm into. I'm kind of enjoying like this takeover that's happening in country, though, with the with the songwriters taking country music back. 
And even with some of the modern sound, though, like there's a guy right now called Co Wetzel, <laughs> who I fucking it's love. Funny. And you know what? He's got that modern kind of pop country feel, but he writes his songs and it's about real shit. He's so fucking talented. He and off stage, he's the Burt Kreischer of country music. Like, and I, I love what he's putting out. He's so, really funny. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. You haven't mentioned Sabbath. The Sabbath is a go-to. Do I have to mention Sabbath? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Sabbath is the goat. Yeah, I'm always listening to Sabbath. Or what's that new country guy that's just bloomed up at everywhere? He played at Stagecoach. Um, forgot his name. Orville Peck. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, love Orville Peck. Dude, his love voice. Him and stop Paul, it with his voice. It's him and so Paul good. Coffin together is the fucking shit. If you haven't heard Paul Coffin, he does the song uh, "Cocaine Country Dancing." Absolute killer oh, okay. song. And they both have those really like those larger than life voices. And they have a band together called the Unrighteous Brothers. Oh, and they're yeah. absolutely... And Orville Peck's new I just new put that song. together that it's them. Yeah, it's the two of them. That's yeah. cool. Wow. That's similar to with um, um, Chris Stapleton and yeah. his brother. They did their own side brother project. Yeah, what was too. that one called? Uh, but it was like more... It was more kind of gritty rock and roll too. Yeah, it, too. Yeah. it was really good. I forgot the name too, but that, that's Steel exactly Dri- what nah, it's not the Steel Drivers. I know the band you're talking about, but that's a killer yeah. band as well, yeah. Yeah, Stapleton's amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's my turn. Yeah, I guess so. I could keep going. Me and Sarah will take this whole That's thing over. That's true. I always yeah. get so nervous when people ask me what I listen to because I, I, can, I get test anxiety and I can't remember. Um, I spent like two years listening to Hamilton and nothing else. So um, I love musicals a lot. She's a theater geek. Yeah. Theater kid yeah. at heart. Theater, yeah, I grew up doing theater. I haven't even seen the musical, and I know all the songs. It's true. <laughs> I know. Everybody that I know knows the entire musical. The next show is going to be the Hamilton Re- I Re- wish. Re- oh, yeah. I want region. us to cover one of the songs. <laughs> I want us to do Satisfied. You're going to need to find we'll a new see. band. On crazy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I love um, Nothing More. They're one of my favorite bands. Yeah. I love them. Um, Did you guys see their show and they came out here a couple weeks ago? I had COVID. Uh, yeah, we had tickets. I was so, so sad. Yeah. yeah, all three of us had tickets and that was uh, the, that day was the, I think the last day I tested positive and so I was like, ah, two shows I had to miss over one. Oh, sequence. it was awful. I was yeah. so, so, so sad because yeah, I wanted to see that so bad. Especially then when they got put as the headliner since asking how they got dropped. Yeah. 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 Oh, dude, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, heard, I heard the show was incredible. So I, know. I know. Lucas went, and he told it. He was, like, giving us updates while he was there. <laughs> we were like, fucking stop this. We're like, <laughs> right now. I was like, I'm going to cry. Like, no, I'm going to talk to you. I know. I was like, I'm going to cry right now. Johnny Hawkins is bae. But um, I like. I also like Grandson a lot. I like his stuff. Um, I've been listening to Spirit Box lately. Hey. They're very metal. They're but I'm, I'm kind of really liking metal and hardcore lately. Because it's like aggressive. Like I just love the screaming. Yeah, if you're vibing with Spirit Box, which are they're they're amazing. They're, they're on their big high right now. You would really, and I think you guys would actually would enjoy it because they do. They mix almost kind of like a funky gent metal together, and it's ginger. Oh, oh I like ginger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Dude, Dude that chick scream! Oh my uh, god, such a killer vocalist. Jesus Christ, she's crazy good. Yeah, and they're only a four piece band. I know. That's yeah, it's crazy. Their sound is so big. I know, yeah. I love that. And they're not even they're not even going digital. They're all when I just saw them out in uh, I was in Denmark, uh, for Copenhagen and they have live rigs. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. He's using a dual rectifier, the guitar player. Nice. Yeah. That's or is nice. it either a dual or a triple? I couldn't see. But like yeah, they there's like I respect bands that are still going for that live yeah. Like, yeah. analog yeah. sound. Yeah. yeah. There's it's a sound you can't fully replicate, man. It's just the facts. Yeah, that's awesome. What else have I been listening to lately? Well, we went to that super mm-hmm. cool Youngblood concert. I love Youngblood. Uh, yeah, Youngblood. I that was him. a hell of a fucking show. I came out of that band. concert that a a, an a Upsall show. fan, too. I fucking love Upsall. She's she's sassy. We're, we're, we've been trying to do this thing as a band where every now and then we go to, we buy tickets together and go to a show, all, just the band, just to get new inspiration and yeah. see what's yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of glean from the rays. yeah. The first one was Youngblood, and then we missed the Nothing More show. But uh, that Youngblood show, like I'm not into that kind of music. You know, I, I think Leandro's the biggest fan. I like some of his songs, but it, that he's was a showman. He's, oh, so, he's so good. Showman. The fucking energy that kid has, and Dude. he puts on a hell of a show, man. Yeah, I was very impressed. I love that. him. Absolutely love him. Yeah. That's what I always give people credit for first. Whenever I go to live, if I don't like them on record, I'll give them a live mm-hmm. take first. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. important. Because it could important. sound completely yeah. different. So many, there's plenty of bands that was, I was turned around from non-point. I never cared for the music personally. It just sounded like, you know, typical kind of radio dad rock band. Yeah. yeah. And then I saw them live performing with Hell Yeah in Texas, and I was blown away. They sound completely, I think, better live. And some artists yeah. are actually. I would say better. that about oh, Young yeah. Blood. Like, like he he like has that. a Live from Atlanta album that is so exponentially better yeah. than his like produced songs. Not that they're bad, but like it's so rock and roll when it's live. It yeah. Is, oh, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I thought was the coolest thing is like on some of the songs on the album, it's like, well, this could have been just all production stuff, but when they play it live, he has like an actual guitar player. Yeah. I don't know if the guitar player records in the album, but man, they had this yeah. super cool. Uh, set up with all of these speaker stacks with lights all over mm -hmm. them and yeah it yeah. makes the show so much cooler yeah, yeah. I, I've watched a lot of stuff with his guitar player because that kind of music always intrigues me as a guitar player because it's so far from what I do I'm always trying to learn about what it is they're doing mm -hmm. there, there's an art I think to simplicity and I feel like that kind of more modern pop kind of sound they do that really well and his guitar player Adam Warrington is a genius guitar player some mm -hmm. of the stuff that he does is really inspiring so yeah, the uh, bands like that are really cool to go see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really into like the <laughs> the new like female pop sound, like a bunch of young girls, but they're like really bitchy and sassy, and I love it. So. I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, they're just like really, and it's kind of funky. I like Lizzo. Well, not I like Lizzo, but no more like like um like Gail and Upsall and kind of Billie Eilish a little mm -hmm. bit, like just like the attitude that's like there right now i just i'm here for it i love it i love no, it no shame i'm the largest halsey fan that girl freaking rips yeah she's fucking awesome everything she does with trip Reznor is amazing yeah i think anything else i listen to right now <laughs> the, leandra goes through phases i do like and she uh, goes everyone should hardcore. go through phases. That's, it's, if you're not a musician going through phases listening to music and you're going to be stuck making the same stuff yeah yeah, yeah i agree yeah and oh, then yeah. you're, you're going to be that bitter person complaining, oh, this doesn't sound like this. I'm like, well, you're just not expanding your musical ears. Yeah. Cleopatra, yeah. I like Cleopatra yeah. a lot. Cleopatra is dope, yeah. yeah. Dead Poets Society. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Dead Poets Society is a big inspiration to us. Yeah. What does Sean listen to? Sean listens to, so Sean's like super into, he, he's a drummer. He likes rhythmic stuff. Mm -hmm. So he he's a reggae guy, and he's from Orange County. So like yeah. I always yeah. make fun of them. I'm yeah. like, what's yeah. up with like these white reggae kids in Orange County? The white like, boy reggae. <laughs> Iration, that's a big thing yeah. down here. Dirty heads. Mm. Dirty heads. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. put on a good show too. Yeah, but he he loves that stuff. He loves Sean's like one of the most anxious yet one of the most positive people you will ever meet. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so he's he's all about the vibes. He's about good vibes, and you know he wants those rhythms. And so like reggae is a big thing. I know he's really into pop punk as well. Like. That's pretty much what he listens to, and he, you know he'll go he outside his wheelhouse. He likes every rap now too. Then. I mean, yeah. I, who doesn't yeah. like rap though? I mean, yeah. Yeah. she raised her hand. You don't like rap? <laughs> I told you this before. That's true. Whoa. Well, I like it, so it's okay. Okay. Like, but there's some that. influence in the band. Yeah. Doesn't have to come from you. Not okay. one, not one hip hop artist you like. You appreciate. Well, hip hop and rap are different. They're like the same genre. It's like saying you know heavy metal and classic rock are the same. You know? I don't know. I think saying hip hop and rap are. The same genre is more like saying like uh, dream theater and like old school blues are the same genre. Like they both got the same DNA for sure. So you hate all rap, like all rap. Who, I, who's an artist that you like? Let's who's start an there. artist that I yeah. like? Uh, let's see. My uncle uh, used to be super into hip hop, and he introduced me to um, man. What was the band called? They had the album Things Fall Apart, The Roots. Oh, oh okay. yeah, 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 cool. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's really fun to me to listen because they have lots of instrumentation mm -hmm. going on and the way they put the songs together, a, a lot of fun for sure. And then uh, I was playing with my, my uncle for a little while and he did some similar kind of stuff. And it, it's cool because that's kind of music I feel like more often you have performances where you have a band, whereas I feel like a lot of rap performances are you have a performance with you know a couple of like digital instruments and you, you don't have necessarily an acoustic drum set or uh, an electric guitar player and I don't have a whole lot of experience going to those kinds of shows I don't know around Riverside I don't know if they're still around but there's a band called People Under the Stairs that's and scary <laughs> that's <so> scary <laughs> <laughs> they, they were super cool guys they were super cool guys uh, they were good uh, good friends of my uncle and so I saw them around quite a bit uh, they, their stuff was a lot of fun and it was uh, a lot of parts to it. I, I like picking apart music. 
but like hardcore rap stuff, I I have trouble with. I, I just have trouble getting to it. You know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll, we'll let it pass. <laughs> <laughs> you made up for saying the roots. <laughs> you should have seen these guys when I tried to order a well done steak. Oh jeez, we, we're not going to talk about that. One. <laughs> <laughs> That's heresy. Well, I, I guess uh, it's uh, it's always a good question to ask. Like, we're on this. It keeps going back and forth. It's not dead. It is dead. Rock is dead. Or whatever. What I want, what I know about it is it is definitely the hardest genre for anything to break out. Rock yeah. is the hardest genre, no matter what. It's always been like that. Even going back into the '80s and '70s, Black Sabbath. There were still a million bands coming out back then, and only a hand a few became legendary, yeah. as we know. And that's what it comes out to. But I guess the reason why is knowing this is such a dense music genre. Knowing that, why is it that you guys want to be? Why do you want to be a rock band? I think it just comes from the soul. You know what I mean? I don't think it's so much like, I we are going to be rock. You know what I mean? It's just what organically comes out, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think since we've all known each other, I mean, obviously me and Leandra have known each other forever, you know, going on, I think, 15 years. Um, and we're married, but our whole relationship started because of music. We were musicians who met, and that's yeah. the thing that brought us together. And obviously with Sarah and Sean, they're, they're bandmates, but that's still the thing that brought our relationship together was music. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it sounds cheesy as fuck when you, when you answer a question like this, but it really is the truth. Like, we live, bleed, and breathe music. Yeah. They're, not rock and roll, but just music. Just like, music in general. It's the passion. It's the thing. You have a shitty day at work, and, you know, like, we've talked about it. You know, we practice once or twice a week. And you come to practice and it's like that weight falls off your shoulders a little bit. It makes you feel better. Mm-hmm. You know, you get on stage, you know, you're fucking high on stage. Yeah, everything yeah. else is gone. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could live without playing live performances. I just don't, I don't It'd know. be difficult. It yeah. would be so It'd weird be difficult, to me. yeah. It, it doesn't matter if I was just going to open mic nights if I wasn't in the band. I'd have yeah. to do something because yeah. uh, I performance is something I have to do. I would 100 percent feel you on that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, we, we start an open mic band. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I, start another band. <laughs> I think something that like uh, Graves and the Bad Weather uh, really prides ourselves on too is like our professionalism and how we handle ourselves not just as a band but as a business. And but the thing is like even we've had talks about this. Even if Graves and the Bad Weather never achieves what we want it to achieve, that never means we stop playing music. Yeah. You know, we'll play music till the day we fucking die. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, um, it's just, it's what we do. You know, if we don't do it, we feel empty. There's something missing. Yeah, yeah. Some of these people are like, well, why are you in a band? It's so hard. I'm like, <laughs> my answer is always like, what else would I do? Right. You know what I mean? Like, I would, if if being in a band wasn't an option, I would still be writing. I'd probably be doing theater if it, there was no other outlet to perform. I'd you know? 100% be seeing you being a theater actress. Yeah, so. being Hamilton. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like, you can't not yeah. do it once you have to do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. The, 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 there's no plan B. This is this is what we do. This is what we'll keep doing. Yeah. You know? This is plan A, point one, point two. Point exactly. It's always plan A, but different points. It's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. A through Z. Yeah. Plan A through Z. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go through again. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, then what's next? What's next for Graves and Bad Weather? What's, what's going what's next in the pipeline for this you thinking 20 steps ahead just did your EP is there a new single gonna come out album in the works maybe putting that together or are you gonna stay on the EP route and singles well I'm gonna go back I can do social media better <laughs> than I've been when I was sick I stopped doing it so I'm gonna go back and start marketing the, the fuck out of every one of the songs yeah mm-hmm. yeah um, we have a couple of songs that are written but not recorded yet. Yeah. That we need to yeah. get into the studio and record. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually performed a couple songs on Saturday that haven't been recorded yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's high on my priority list. I used to hate going into the studio, but it's so fun going into the studio with Graves. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting that done. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like I said, the show was initially booked as our going away show. Yeah. So we had a lot of plans in place prior to this as far as what we were going to do in Nashville and we've had to shift those plans Mm -hmm. I think now you know with things you know being open again we're going to explore spending more time out on the road we're definitely going to explore the the album route the full length because Mm -hmm. I think one thing that held us back was we wanted to make sure that when we released the full length we were able to do vinyl 
and the vinyl yeah. production has been yeah. so fucked up. Yeah. 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 So, but it seems like that's opening up too. A lot of people are opening up their own vinyl plants. So, I think, I think definitely expect a Graves in the Bad Weather full length. You know, in the in the future, and then seeing us around too. We're putting together plans now. Like I mentioned, we got something in the works with the Whiskey and the Wolves and some other homies. And I want to get some you know, collaborations going too. I think I'll we'll be, be saying something. Yeah, that. we've been talking about doing that for a while, and yeah. I think we just haven't pulled the trigger on that. So. Yeah. Yeah, working closely with some other bands. Hearing you guys live the second time, because I first saw them previous with Whiskey and the Wolves in their show, you guys were doing in Santa Monica back in like January, February mm-hmm. around yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, something that could be cool, maybe you guys would think about it, you could take it with a grain of salt. But like, it, it's, you don't, what I could see you guys doing it, because you have such a unique voice, especially with DeAndre, and you have mm-hmm. his tone itself. Yeah. You guys could do really cool, just for fun, once, like maybe every couple of months, release like a fun cover song. And yeah. make it your own yeah. style, mm-hmm. just because that well, band that su- successfully has done that is Our Last Night. They pump out a fucking new cover every freaking like week, but they make yeah. it their own style. Oh, okay. But that's why I can say with you guys, you when you did My Chemical Romance yeah. Teenagers, you did it your own style. Okay. So that's another fun thing that you guys can make, and it you know expands you musically. You're learning oh, other yeah. bands' music. Oh yeah, no doing. learning learning yeah. other stuff is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think we had explored that idea, too, and we just kind of got to circle back around it. We used to have a little studio set up in L.A. we used to go to with our label, and the, then the label moved to Nashville, so we've been working remotely, and I think that idea just kind of got lost. But yeah. I do love that idea of doing that. It'd yeah. be fun. We could make a list and each choose a song and yeah. all day. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be the fun. weirdest, most eclectic <laughs> list you'll ever hear. Yeah. You could do what you call the time machine you'd be in. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the song. I call it the what the fuck EP. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I think yeah. that's that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep pushing and going as far as we can and, you know, mm-hmm. being professional about it. Yeah, you know, we are big believers in uh, quality versus quantity. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to playing live. So we're not a band where you can come see us, you know, every two weeks. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we'd like to make sure that you know, every event that we put on is just that. It's an event. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just another show. Yeah, so. exactly. You don't want to be caught in the rut of playing the same place as an OC. There's bands plenty doing that. Mm-hmm. Doing exactly. a show every month. Yeah. Like, yeah. It yeah. makes it special for people who want to come out and see you. Yeah. You got to, you know, even wanting more, just a little bit. You know? Yeah, yeah. You I mean, got to show them the full stuff, right? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did lift up my shirt at the show, so. Yeah? I had a bra on, don't worry. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> I, I, I did. That's why I didn't take mine off. So we tried to get you to take yours <laughs> off. True, I remember that. <laughs> no one's got clearance for that. <laughs> well, thank you guys again for this. You know, take two, take two point <laughs> two point oh. Yeah, thanks, buddy. But uh, killer show it was an amazing show. Huge performance. Everyone thanks, loved man. it. You guys have killer merch design, killer everything design. Uh, congratulations on the EP thank again. You. Freaking thank you. love the new sound direction you guys are going. And I hope it kind of continues that direction, but evolving yeah. mm-hmm. more and whatnot. Obviously, you got to evolve as a band, increasing your sound. Yeah. But look forward to when you guys are actually going to record those two songs that you guys did perform live. Yeah. Yeah, and that'll get done. So, see in the future what they have. They're not going to have any bad weather, that's for sure. <laughs> Here's open. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'll have everything put down, their links, their socials, everything like that, so you can check on their Facebook page and Instagram page and website, and if they have an OnlyFans, it's probably his beard. Beard definitely his beard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll see what's under the beard. Only beards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that good stuff, link below, so you keep following up and give them a shout out, and get by their merch. They have sick designs. I don't know if you guys put them up there yet, because... That design from the album work yeah. is on their shirt. The EP art yeah. is on their shirt. Yeah. And it's pretty sick. So Gravesinthebadweather.com. Don't waste your money on black crap and look like every other basic person. Right? <laughs> yeah. Grab actual yeah. band merch. That looks sick. <laughs> 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 uh, but thank you guys. So always horns up. <laughs>